Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today, let's talk Fear of the Walking Dead, Season 2, Episode 1 Review. Uh, before we get into this, just want to let you guys know, yes, I'm going to go back and revisit The Walking Dead Season 6 and talk about the cliffhanger or who we killed. We will have discussions. I'm also going to review the entire season. We're also going to have predictions for Season 7. Uh, so many people are afraid I'm done making videos. We have six months, you know? I put out ID, uh, what, cliffhanger video and some predictions video uh, for Season 7. I, I did videos on it, but I didn't overload it because I figured there's going to be so much out there, you guys are going to get sick of it. So we're going to move on to fear, and in a little bit I'm going to come out with some more of those Walking Dead videos. And I got this um, comic cover video that I really want to do the right way. That's kind of stalling everything up with the comic cover videos. Once that particular one is done and I can move on, they'll be coming out a lot more until we catch up. But anyway, let's get right into this. I just want to go down and talk about what I was uh, feeling <laughs> as I was watching the show. Well, to start off with Fear of the Walking Dead, when we first began, it didn't explain anything. And I was kind of afraid we weren't going to get an explanation, which is kind of like a pattern I've noticed where it's like, well, we don't want to do, you know, 20 minutes of story of the bombings and they got to pack and leave. Let's just skip all that. So here we go. They're on a beach. It's fiery and they got to get the hell out of there. And, uh, you know, we could just figure it out with exposition later on. Some of that, it's okay. Like, I understand why they did it here. One thing that I was thinking, did that scene either A, hint at something very big, a possible future storyline, or is it just something that might fall between the cracks because it's something they did establish in The Walking Dead that they do bomb the cities and it's also something they established in Fear the Walking Dead at the end of the episode. It was kind of like one of the bigger moments like, oh shit, you got to get out of there because they're going to bomb you. But what I'm talking about is when they came back and bombed them, a little while later we hear on the radio, they're like, oh, it's there's no hope, everything's lost, forgive us or some shit like that. Why would they be bombing just a few hours before, even a day before, let's be honest. Why would they be bombing to contain the thing, to kill the virus, to kill people, to, you know, uh, why would they do that if there isn't something else that's definitely there to protect? In my opinion, it feels like if everything's lost or everything's just right about to be lost anyway, in just hours away or a full day or two days away, I don't think they'd waste their time or effort, you know, bombs to just go bomb the city like that. I don't know. So that could play a, ma a major part because if there's something they're protecting, that would explain why they're like, okay, we have the government and people and leaders in bunkers go out there, hit the cities, the big mass population, populated areas, blow up as many walkers as you can, and then later we will work, you know, at taking out the rest. I don't know. It was an idea I had. <laughs> uh, moving on from there, five minutes into this episode, and a character pisses me off. Yes, Chris with his, I'm not leaving her. That's fine. I get that you're not going to leave your mom, but get up and kick some ass then. Don't just let your father and stepmother have to deal with the walkers because you're being a little bitch. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, five minutes in. Ugh. And also, I noticed that the killings were off screen. And I literally wrote down, head smashing off screen, question mark, question mark. Because I'm like, don't do this family friendly shit. Don't do that. Please don't do that. And then they get the motorboat scene as soon as I got done writing that down. So we get some of it where it's kind of like, well, nah, it was a little jarring is what I'm saying. I don't, we don't have to see blood and guts for every single freaking zombie. But I'm just saying with the way they filmed it, it just felt a little jarring. It felt like we were going to get the action, but then it was like too close up. And it, I was like, cameraman, pull back. You know, we can't see what's going on. Um, but then later we get the blood and gore. So it, maybe it was a time issue where it's like, okay, we don't got the time to do the whole uh, make a dummy head and have it explode. So kill off screen and then we'll get the motorboat and that'll be pretty cool. So I don't know. Anyway, I also want to throw in here to 3000 miles. Yes, somebody should start making a little map where they say they are, where they might be, where they say they're going to go so we can kind of see where they're heading. Maybe it'll give us some clues. I'm not good at maps. One of you guys do that. Wow, map isn't good at maps. <laughs> Go figure. 
Also, the radio guy talking as if he already knows it's a girl. And don't say, you know, anything because this is before she said anything. She didn't make a mumble. She didn't go, uh, she didn't be like, uh, you know, nothing. She just clicked the walkie. That was it. Just a one click. And he's already talking and kind of flirty, borderline flirty, before he even knows it's a chick. That could be some dude that's getting eaten by a, z a zombie or something, and he just clicks the button, ah, you know. And he's just talking as if, don't be shy, whatever, pick up. So that part I didn't like. And then, you fucking idiot. They already established the daughter is very smart, right? At least book smart. Now, I've known people that were really book smart, but street smarts, they are as dumb as a rock. They're as dumb as it gets. Uh, me, I am i don't trust anybody from the gate, so maybe that's just something where I think she's a complete and utter moron for her actions. But at this point, I get, listen, I can look past the zombie shit, and I know so many fans right now say, it's hard to watch it because we're so used to Rick and them kicking ass and the, the walkers are nothing, that watching these characters, it's like, don't you know that's a zombie, you dumbass? Well, no, they don't know. They're new to this world. That doesn't bother me at all. I can watch, you know, an origin story of a zombie outbreak uh, repeatedly, you know, through the eyes of different creators, and I can have fun with it and be like, okay, this is new. They're new to this. This is fine. But the common sense shit where you are in a crisis situation and everything you have is gold, you know, it's valuable resources, there's no law, <laughs> you know, there's no order, nobody's going to come and help you, protect you, you guys are not, you know, uh, armed to the teeth, you're not secure, you're not safe on that boat, you got a couple guns, big whoop, uh, you know, this is dangerous times, and she's just like, oh, you said you're dying or fucking drowning or some shit's going wrong let me tell you where i'm at fucking idiot let's talk about the water walker real quick um nick goes in the water and they showed this i was hoping this was a promo because this scene was kind of stupid in my opinion he goes underwater and then he swims up close to the walker hey look at later they say he's fearless strand does so maybe that fits that could be a good way to say uh he is fearless half stupid but fearless. I'll buy that. That's fine. So at first I wanted it to be a promo because it felt kind of stupid, but if they were linking that up with, here's a dude who's fearless, and you know, a lot of people like me, I just said that was stupid, but if we really break it down and say, you know what, this kid wants to get up close and personal because these are things he's going to have to deal with for the rest of his life now, as far as he knows. This is what the world is. So get close, get personal, get a good up close look, Know what you're dealing with. Don't be afraid or conquer your fears. If it was in that aspect, I would have been perfectly fine with the scene. One thing I really don't like is the whole cliffhanger commercial bullshit they did. And it's so damn choppy. And this is something that makes rewatching it painful as shit. Because if you go and rewatch that now without the commercials, he's swimming. You get the walker. The walker does its fake little bullshit jump scare, rah, you know, and it cuts to black. You wait like three seconds, you know, it's totally jarring. It takes you out of the moment. And then when it cuts back on, and this is without commercials on Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, however you're going to watch it after it airs, because I rewatched it on Amazon, so I know how it's cut. Um, now, uh, when it comes back into play, he's going to be, now the camera's going to come back and it'll have that jump because you have that two, three, four seconds of black where the commercial was or where the commercial interrupted it. So that's something that I can't stand when TV shows can't pinpoint the commercials around scenes that won't be jarring when you rewatch it. The Walking Dead's done that a couple times. Even, you know, other shows have done that a few times. So it's not just Fear of the Walking Dead, but it is something I would rather they remedy than keep using. Uh, besides the jump scares, especially something like that, uh, I think this show is better than that, and I'd prefer if they just uh, skipped it. Uh, next, I wrote Chris. It makes sense finally when... Uh, remember I showed you guys the picture of him in the prediction video where he's like, he has his hand in his pockets and he just kind of just flops right into the water? Well, they don't show that, which means it has to be a deleted scene because we saw it in the, uh, um, the previews, the trailer, the teaser. 
He just puts his hand puts his hands in his pockets and dives face down into the water, and that's it, you know. Uh, and I was like, "This is so weird and odd." Now we know he threw himself in, which ended up being kind of like a wasteful scene because it was all like, "Oh my god!" And then three seconds later, it's like, "What, dude? I'm swimming," you know. Um, it fell off. That scene just fell off, you know. I wish they would have just showed him going out, you know, kind of moody going out, and then being like you know what, I'm going for a swim, fuck this. And he jumps in, and then everyone overreacts. I think that would have fit better. Keeping us in the dark made it feel like they were suspense, they were building us up with like a false uh, sense of, you know, suspense or action or something good that's happening, when in fact, yeah, he's just going swimming. You see what I mean? Did I explain that good or no? <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, so he goes uh, for a little swim, the, Nick goes over to that boat to get the, the captain's log. Now, I'm guessing that log is going to tell us about their journey and maybe something in that log will tell the crew something to be weary of. Maybe they had a run-in with somebody. I don't know. But the, the log has to have a purpose because why else would they go through that trouble of showing them take it? You know what I mean? Uh, and another thing is when the mother is like uh well the people who did that they're coming back um that kind of cliffhanger two things why i don't like that type of cliffhanger for one those kind of cliffhangers are fine where you're expecting something dangerous and you cliffhanger it that's fine that's cool and that's common and those are usually the better cliffhangers not like mid-scene hint hint but what i'm saying is where it gets to be problematic is the fact that Right after this cliffhanger, this dun dun dun, they're on their way to get us. Then you show us the previews of what's happening, and it's like, yeah, you lose all that worry now because the previews clearly show, you know, a couple problems with people, but it's not like a big problem. I'm not worried at all about the the characters, put it that way. And that's another thing too with what's happening with the jump scares, the fake scares. Right now, I don't feel like anyone's life is in danger. I feel like they are giving us these characters that they will invest so much into that I don't feel like anyone's in danger probably until the end of the season. The closer we get to the end of the season, I might start being worried for one of the characters. But right now, I don't have a worry in the world. They go in the water, I don't give a shit. I'm not worried. I care. I'm watching it. It's cool. But I'm not worried. You know, there's walkers not worried. They go in the boat to get them, not worried. There's a boat that looks like it has a huge ass gun that just shot the shit out of that other boat. I'm not worried, you know, because I know it's going to, or at least I feel um, by watching this, I feel like it's going to be at least 10 more episodes until anyone's even facing any danger, any real danger. And even at that, and yes, I know this is kind of something that's hard to get around, but I just feel like it might only be like one character that's in danger. Uh, this is a show that, again, it just feels like these characters they set us up with, it's going to be, for the long haul, the danger is just not there, you know, for them, or the suspense, it, it, it ain't there. Now, I will say in closing, in my opinion, this was a weak premiere episode, definitely, but I will give them credit, and I do respect the fact that they didn't force something into this episode just to give us an explosive premiere. And I respect that a lot. So I'm fine with a slower premiere, a weaker premiere, um, because they didn't force something in there and say, well, this is a premiere, so you know what? Let's start it off with them being captured by this boat already. Shit's going down. You know, uh, Chris is about to get killed. Travis is about to get shot in the face. Oh, cliffhanger and go back to the beginning where they're on the beach. I'm glad they didn't just force something on us like that. And not only that, but we'd, we'd have to wait to catch up to that point. But anyway, or anything else for that matter, I'm glad they didn't just jam something in here. A couple issues with the characters, and that's a common problem. I'm seeing that everywhere on social media. Lots of people just are not liking the, the characters. Um, they're not coming off likable a lot of the time. And sometimes it's because attitude. A lot of them seem like they have attitude. And one thing that gets problematic is when you have characters that 
maybe even have difference of opinion or bicker like Madison and Travis. It's nice seeing Travis step up and say, listen, you know what? We can't control that situation. We can't let all those people on here. We don't have the resources. How are we going to feed them in three hours when everyone's starving? What are we going to do when we only caught one fish? You know, how do we feed all these people? We're out on a boat. What if 10 of them decide to just take us out? You know, how do we sleep? Do we sleep with one eye open? Do we do it in shifts? It's cool seeing Travis step up and it's cool seeing where Madison's soft spot is. But at the same time, when they give each other attitude about each other's opinions at this time, or even strand and the friction there, the internal friction that's going on on the boat, it doesn't give you that same vibe at all where you're pulling for these survivors to make it out together. I'm almost left wishing we had a group of survivors that whatever happened led them to this moment in time and they're going to work together. Uh, I would almost prefer watching that than I would conflict among, you know, them going to take out Strand, is Strand going to kick them off? That kind of conflict right now just, it seems like it's been done over and over. I would like to watch this, this group kind of pull together. You get what I'm saying? No internal beef and struggle, and I know it's Hollywood's thing. You know, conflict is interesting, always insert conflict. But again, I'm just left one, wanting to root for these characters to survive. I'm a little bored watching them argue, you know? And I think that's all I got to say about this. If I missed anything, don't worry. We'll probably cover it in a q and a If you have any questions for the q and a I'm going to be asking for questions for the q and a So if you want to leave a few here, I'll be also asking the it on Instagram. We don't normally leave the questions in the reviews, but we're jump-starting the Q&As for fear. Anymore, you're going to leave the questions in the fear Q&A. But let me know, on a scale of 1 to 10, honestly, how excited are you for this season? Uh, my excitement after watching the next previews kind of fell down a little because I feel like they showed us a little more, I guess, and it looks like this season's going to play out a lot like season one, except for on a boat instead of on land. Give me your thoughts and opinions down below and check out the prediction video. I'm going to try to get that up right after this one. Sorry about there's not a lot of editing in here and I didn't put in pictures. I got a lot going on today. I got a lot of work to do getting my script for my comic to the artist. There's just so much going on right now. So uh, you're going to get a pretty raw video right now. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, thoughts and opinions in that comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn. Subscribe now.